When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with faith in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. Walk on, walk on, with faith in your heart, and you'll never And good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's program of the Copite Church. And we've got all sorts of wonderful things this morning, including a tribute, which Dave's going to talk about, to a rival player of a rival team. And let's just enjoy this morning together, and let's just listen to this next song which is called it is no secret what god can do good to remember in the corona times the chimes of time ring out the news another day is through Someone slipped and fell Was that someone you? You may have longed For added strength and courage To renew Do not be disheartened For I bring you for you, it is no secret what God can do. What is done for others, He'll do for you.
God can do. Wonderful, Lindsay. Praise the Lord. Welcome, everyone, to the Coppite Church. This is a an awesome occasion because, Lindsay, I remember watching Norman Hunter very well. He was known throughout the game as bite your legs. But <laughs> then Liverpool had a left back who was called the Crunch. And we used to shout on the cop, Jerry Byrne, Crunch, Crunch. It was a real man's game in those days. It was even competing with your rugby. I can tell you that for nothing. <laughs> And, of course, Liverpool had its iron man in Tommy Smith. And at the time, do you remember when there was the protest, the black protest, where they wore, wore black gloves at the Olympics many years ago? Well, the Liverpool supporters took this up and started wearing red gloves. And uh, we, we used, used to shout this for Tommy Smith with our red gloves like they did at the Olympics with black gloves. I tell you, these were tough days to be a footballer. They were the days of the real footballs, which were what were called like case balls. And they used to have leather in them with laces in them. And I tell you this, you, you headed one of those that, you know, you get knocked out right away. These were really tough days. And, and we're going to pay tribute to uh, Norman, Norman Hunter, our rival, about a very special football game I was at when Norman Hunter was involved. Thank you, Lindsay. We'll see you later. Father, we come in the name of Jesus and we intercede and pray for the Norman Hunter family at this time who have lost a loved one uh, with coronavirus. And whilst we give you praise and all the glory, after last week's intercession and prayer for Kenny Dalglish, how he's back home, uh, no doubt being nagged at by his wife to uh, pressure wash the patio, which we've heard through Kelly, is going on and he's getting grumpy about it. It's almost like a, a copy of this household here. So we, we praise you, Lord Jesus, that that's happened with Kenny. But our hearts are going out to the Leeds United supporters, uh, many of whom remember Norman in the great time under Don Revy. And we, we, we thank you for Norman and we thank you that it was a tough man's game in those days and we got fond memories of it and have fond memories of him. And we pray for his family at this time who are suffering so much that thou would comfort them and thou would be at their door knocking at their door, showing thy comfort and thy love at this very difficult time for the Hunter family. We give you praise and all the glory. Now, I was at this football match, Lindsay. You've got a copy of the details there. It was on Monday, the 28th of April, 1969, which meant I'm um, 56, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 69. I was 16 years old. And I remember standing in the middle of the cop like I did in those days, in the days when it was all standing, where you had to run away from people having a wee and all the rest of it, and that's all the sway used to go down. But this was a very special game because if Liverpool won this game, they had, still had a chance of winning the league. But all Leeds United had to do was get a draw, and that's what they did do. And Liverpool and Leeds in those days at the end of the 60s were the two top teams. They were the Liverpool and Manchester City. They were the Manchester City of the day. They were the most difficult team for Liverpool to beat. And there was a real battle between Bill Shankly and uh, Don Revy at those times. And let me say, however, it was a tough, Strong rivalry, but one of great respect, just as there is today between Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola. It was that kind of respect between the two top managers of the day, Bill Shankly and Don Revy. In the Liverpool lineup was the flying pig, Tommy Lawrence, 
As Lindsay loves to watch the um, the Liverpool team of these days because the Scots are there uh, very prevalent, as indeed uh, there was certain Scots in the Leeds United team, as we'll have a look in in just a moment. Tommy Lawrence, Chris Lawler, Scouser, Jeff Strong, Tommy Smith, Scouser, Ron Yates from. Lindsay's stamping ground of some years ago, uh, Dundee. Emlyn Hughes, uh, England captain. Ian Callaghan. Bobby Graham, who was a great small player. He, he was a great forward, a very nippy forward. Alan Evans, who Liverpool bought, I think, for a record fee from Wolverhampton Wanderers. I think it was just for £100,000 was the record fee in those days. And another Scott, Lindsay, Ian St. John and Peter Thompson. And the Leeds team, Gary Sprake, who notorious, I was also at the game when he literally threw the ball into the back of his own net. I was there. He did it in front of the cop. Not in this game, unfortunately. It was a game after this, I think. Uh, and he was the Welsh international goalkeeper. He was going to throw the ball out to one of his players. He threw the ball and threw it all the way back into the back of his own net. And then the DJ, it was right on half time. The players were walking off. And it's, I, I can't remember any time at Anfield a Des O'Connor record being played. But on this occasion, there was, which was called Careless Hands. <laughs> <laughs> that was played with Gary Sprague. But normally, look, everyone can make a mistake. Dear Gary, Welsh international. And he made that mistake. But not in this game, unfortunately. This was a very, very tight game. There was Paul Reaney, Terry Cooper, Billy Bremner, the fiery red-headed Scott, uh, who later on had a great fight at Wembley with Kevin Keegan. Uh, there was, and we used to sing at him, uh, you dirty big giraffe, which was Jack Charlton. And Jack used to... Turn towards the cop. Can you give us a tissue, Lindsay? I haven't got my handkerchiefs with me today. Uh, and he used to turn towards the cop and wave at them as the cop sung to him. You'd be, you dirty big giraffe. And it was all in fun. And then there was Bite Your Legs. Bite Your Legs, Norman Hunter. And Jack Charlton and Norman Hunter both played great games that day to keep Liverpool out. Leeds were mostly on the defensive. All they needed was a draw. And all that what they did was literally, as we say today, park the bus. And Norman Hunter and Jack Charlton together were formidable to get past. And look, look who was against them there. There was Ian St. John and Peter Thompson, Ian Callaghan, Emlyn Hughes firing in for mi midfield. That this was the game between the two top teams in the country at that time. There was Mike O'Grady, Paul Maidley, Mick Jones, centre forward, Johnny Giles, Ireland, and Eddie Gray. Scott. Yes, indeed, Lindsay says Scots. This whole game it was full of Scots. <laughs> there really was. Where's all your footballers gone, Lindsay? I mean, you look at some of the players which are on show here. You got Andy Robertson now, that's right. I know. And But we're paying special tribute today to Norman Hunter, who, who played an absolute blinder, as they say, that, those, that, that day, with Jack Charlton. And it's a remarkable story, because all Leeds needed was a draw. And, you know, when someone else wins the league on your ground, you would expect in the normal senses there to be great booings and things like this and whistlings and so forth. But just listen to what happened. And this is what Liverpool Football Club is all about. The average age of the Liverpool starting line lineup was just over 26 years of age. Leeds, 25 years of age. Liverpool's league position after the match, they were second. And of course, Leeds ended up as champions. They clinched the title. A defeat for Leeds might have swung the championship towards the home team. But 
Leeds held out and won the title. Notice the, the account here says they held out. They were holding on. They was, I was there. I remember. I was only 16 years of age. They were holding on. When Liverpool players left the pitch, just listen to this account. And this is what uh, Liverpool is all about. I've seen this happen on many occasions. The Leeds players didn't know what to do with themselves. They just won the league. But they didn't win it on their ground. They won it in front of a ground which had the vast majority of Liverpool supporters. Indeed, in the ground that day was 53,750. If I hadn't been there, it would have been 749. I was one of them. And the Leeds players didn't know what to do with themselves. They'd won the league, but they just didn't know what to do. And they walked towards the cop and they were unsure of the reception they get from the cop. From the, or from the hole of the ground. And then one Leeds player raised his hand towards the cop and then the others followed suit. And at first there was silence. Then the applause started. It didn't stop. The reaction from the cop that night is legendary. You know, it's very easy to cheer and shout when you want something. Yeah, give us something. This is, this, is what, this is what sport should be all about. You know, there should never be the hatreds. There should never be the, the ignorant chantings. Fun chantings, banter, 100%. Let's have more of it. What we don't want is the hatreds. And I have to say this, had this happened on one of the London grounds, I don't think this would have happened. But in Anfield is different. Anfield's a place where it, all teams are respected. That is, if they're footballing teams. There's teams who've gone there who don't get respected because they've not come to play football. But Leeds were a footballing team, including Norman Hunter. Yet he was the hard man of the team, as in the Liverpool team, was Tommy Smith. This was a real man's game in these days. And the reaction of the cop, it says in our account, was legendary. To stand there as a Leeds player and to be cheered by the cop was something, claimed Jack Charlton after the game. I'll never forget it. And Don Revy enthused... It was simply fantastic. What a great gesture. You would have thought their team had won the league. Well, if that's not a great tribute, and as we Liverpool supporters give tribute to a great team of those days, as we Liverpool supporters give tribute to Norman Hunter, who, as you see on our screen, I think is playing Liverpool uh, you can see, am I pointing the right way? I always put the wrong way. There it is, see there? I think it's Wembley in the picture there. You can see him going in with, can you see him going in with, <laughs> with a big lunge there? Yeah. Now, that was Norman Hunter. In those days, it wasn't, I mean, I tell you, Tommy Smith and Norman Hunter today will probably last on the pitch two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're present day referees. But these days, it was different. It was a different game. And Norman would bite your legs, as you see there. But he was, he was fair. He was, he was going in hard for his team. And Jack Charlton wrote an article about this particular match. He said, though he went, oh, this is an article about Jack Charlton. He said, though he went on to manage the Republic of Ireland in two World Cup showdowns, after being a cornerstone of England's triumph in the 1966 final, Jack Charlton rates his Anfield experience among the many peaks of his football memories. As the 68-69 season neared its climax, Bill Shankly's Liverpool needed to beat Leeds United to maintain a strong bid for the third post-war championship. But Don Revy's equally determined Leeds United snatched the title with a goalless draw, went on to amass a record 67 points. Remember, three for a win was not introduced until 81 to 82. 
duly overtaken by Liverpool with 68 points in 1978-79. Revy, bravely considering the keen rivalry between the teams. My God, there was. This, this was the Liverpool Man City rivalry of today, Lindsay. This, this was a great, these were the two top teams. Urges players to embark on a lap of honour before the fans uh, of the uh, before the fans of the vanquished. It was a deep, searching test of the professionalism and sportsmanship of Liverpool's disappointed supporters. Their spontaneous reaction was one of the highlights of the sporting calendar. Charlton recalls: "You have to remember that Liverpool were the big team at the time." And I was not at all sure how their crowd would react, knowing they couldn't catch us. I honestly doubted the wisdom of parading as the newly crowned champions. Liverpool had pressed us hard in the race. But the atmosphere during a competitive game, I was there, I remember, had been terrific. And the reception we were given afterwards was tremendous. Liverpool supported Bradley and me, said Jack Charlton, as a dirty big giraffe. I just told you that, you know. There's the evidence, primary evidence. But it was chanted affectionately. And Anfield became my favourite ground Aww. after that. And it was. I mean, we used to make all kinds of jokes. <laughs> I'm telling you, Anfield was a place of great humour. And it still is. Shanks came into the dressing room to congratulate us afterwards and told us we were worthy champions. He said if Liverpool couldn't win it, Leeds United were the next best team. In his reprinted bestseller, Charlton writes, the people at Liverpool know their football better than anywhere else in the country. Isn't that a remarkable statement? If we couldn't win it at Ellen Road, there was no better place to do so than Anfield. Like Big Jack, Billy Bremner, the captain of Leeds United, a fiery key player in a highly competitive midfield alongside the powerful Norman, bite your legs, Hunter. See, I told you that. I told you that's what he was called. Also rates that April evening as one of the outstanding moments of his career. I can still hear the Liverpool fans to this day, recalls Bremner. The way they responded it was one of the most heartwarming moments of my career. Leeds United won the 1969 Championship, six points ahead of Liverpool, with Everton third on 57. Well, what a remarkable account. And I have here, and I can show it to you, a copy of the programme of that night. I was there, Monday 28th of April. If I just come towards the camera, there's a copy of the programme. And look how much it was. The programme cost 9D. This was before decimalisation. Ninepence for the, for the, for the, uh, for the programme, which you can see there before you, showing all the times Liverpool have been Football League champions up until that moment and then we've got some articles i think the top articles from the liverpool echo this is by derek wallace and it reads Leeds united are league champions for the first time in their history they clinched the title before fifty-three thousand fans at anfield last night by drawing with liverpool the only team that could rob them of the greatest prize in english football and the cop rose are the new champions they forgot momentarily their own disappointments to salute Leeds as Don Revy's proud team went on a lap of honour. How, how, how could that be? A, a, a rival team, one of the greatest rivals, do a lap of honour at their greatest rival's ground and be applauded by their rivals. Norman Hunter, that night, was in that team. Oh, bite your legs, was in that team. And Liverpool supporters, me included, remember him fondly. We like to see people who went in hard, but fair. And Norman was in that category, as was Tommy Smith, as was Jerry Byrne. And today's game is a very different game because you've only got to touch a player and, and, and they go down. And, and, and that. But in those days, it was so, so different. 
And players like Norman Hunter and Tommy Smith used to look after the younger players at that time and bring the conditions for them to be able to play their game. The league title is showed here, the, the, the final, the top of the table. The end of that game, Leeds had 65 points and Liverpool had 60 points. Beneath them as Arsenal at 56, beneath them as Everton at 54. It was a very tight situation, unlike the league this year. Liverpool were not 25 points clear or Leeds. It was tight to the end. And Liverpool needed to win this game to have any chance. They didn't. They drew and Leeds won the league. And we applauded them. Not just half-heartedly, but they got a great send-off and a great applause. Because they were a great football team. And this is what football is all about. But at this time, the Hunter family are going through a very hard time. They no doubt have the medal from that night of the league champions medal for which Norman took a pass. He would have played for England more, I believe, had it not been for Bobby Moore. But Norman was a great, great player. And if this programme has been watched by anyone in Leeds, listen, I know the rivalry. I've been to Ellen Road and it's a massive rivalry. I have a friend who's a Christian, Brian Normanton, who is a Leeds United supporter. And he will tell you, like I can tell you, of the great rivalry between those two teams. And it's only because Leeds have not been in the Premier League of, of Lace that we don't talk about that rivalry. But that rivalry is massive. It's the old Lancashire-Yorkshire thing, even though... Liverpool's not in Lancashire anymore, it was then, but it, it, it's something more than that. There's a great rivalry between the two cities, between Liverpool and Leeds. And we, we, and we have something in common that the, the most disliked team of both Leeds and Liverpool is Man United. And that's gone on for years as well, that's nothing new. But what we're talking about here is a great player in Norman Hunter. And I've got some words from the Bible which I trust will encourage and build up, if by any chance the Hunter family should be watching this program. And I do not know whether they are Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever they are, but I feel led of the Spirit to declare these words to the Hunter family, knowing that our hearts are with them at this time. Our hearts are understanding their grief of a man just 76 who has died in hospital of coronavirus, this terrible virus. And we pray in the name of Jesus for this family. Mm. Jesus declaring, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister, secretly saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. I believe the Lord is calling for us all, whether it be Man U, Man City, Liverpool, Everton. Jesus died for us all. That on the football pitch, it's right that we play competitively. It's right we play with all that we've got. It's right we look to win the league, win the cup, win the Champions League. Whatever it is we do in life, we need to do it with all that we've got. Whether we're digging the garden, whether we're doing this or doing that, we need to give it all it's got. And Norman Hunter gave it all he had. And he's a fine example to us all in that regard. He was not a partial footballer. And neither should we be partial people. And he's an inspiration to us all to be able to, 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 to take on what looked the impossible. To get a draw at Anfield in those days. 
They achieved it by working hard. I was at the match. They were under the cosh, but they didn't give in. They stood determined in the defence to hold a great Liverpool team back. And we should draw inspiration from this. And you know, the Lord Jesus uh, talks to us about not being half-hearted. To be able to fulfill the goal. But what's important. God has a goal for us all. And it's important we hear from him. The Bible says attend to my words. They are life unto them that find them. Health to all their flesh. Now our dear brother lost his fight. And I trust I can say brother. Because I do not know whether he is a brother or not. But I'm saying this from the spirit. Who knows where he's at? I've never met the man. But I trust that he is a brother. And I trust that he is on his way to heaven or in heaven at this time. Um, and, and, I, I, and our hearts go to his family. And, and, and we love them and we bless them. And trust the dear Lord Jesus is heard in the family. Because there's only him who is the way, the truth and the life. It's only him who can help that hunter family and the whole of anybody, anyone at all, whatever it be, rugby, football, anything, is only Jesus. The Bible says in all things, he must have the preeminence. And as Lindsay comes to sing, he touched me. You know, the words are so appropriate for the situation because it's obvious the hunter family are feeling this heavy burden. And we want them to know Jesus loves you. He died for you. And he rose again. That we should all be victorious. Not in our strength, but in his. And we invite you to receive the Savior as your Lord today in the precious name of Jesus. Lindsay, come and see. Thank you, David. It's always wonderful to be with you on a Saturday morning. Dear Copites and others who are watching this program. And everybody, the Hunter family, especially just now, but so many others need a touch from God. And that's what this song is all about. Would you come a bit nearer, Lindsay, oh, yeah. so we can He's see? He's bigger than me. We can <laughs> see all. <laughs> yeah. That's better. <laughs> okay. We can see you now with your Liverpool scarf. <laughs> the, the scarf Lindsay's wearing just like the scarves we used to wear in the old yeah. days. It's not, it's not a modern scarf. It's an heirloom. <laughs> it's an heirloom. <laughs> oh, here you go. Here Lindsay, are. are you ready to sing? I am. Okay, here we go.
Sometimes my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Something.